am with the team from Texas A&M Corpus Christi and uh, this is uh, the team that uh, participated in the 2018 uh, NSPS student competition. So I'm going to start by asking them to introduce themselves. I'm Anna Newman. I'm Josh Keese. I'm Joanna Scott. I'm Mitchell Grimm. I'm Kendall Henry. I'm Miranda Valdez. So, uh, so this was a little bit uh, different from uh, the normal survey project that probably you all did in class. And I know some of you have a little bit of uh, work experience. How, how does that, uh, that experience of having to do a project like this tell you about what you've learned in terms of your education? How did it prepare you to do a project like this? I think our education helped us in the fact that we have do everything in class in the field book. And so we knew what to expect and how to do that for this project. Um, but conversely, this project helped us learn other skills that can be used professionally, such as how to use uh, equipment that we're not normally used to using. Well, I'd say that even though we weren't using the same kind of equipment we would in class, uh, the technique is still somewhat similar. And so even though the, the equipment is just slightly bit different, we still had uh, a semblance of an idea of what to do. I think the one-day lab format that we use really helped us because we, in lab, only have a few hours to do what we need to do, and uh, here we only had the few hours to do what we need to do, so that really kind of helped us be prepared for quick decisions in the field. Yeah. Uh, the classwork really helps with the uh, less practical side, so we don't always get to use total stations and other normal uh, everyday equipment, so we actually got to have a little bit of practice with compasses and a lot of practice with uh, a level. I feel like we use a good amount of chaining and plumbing and all of that in the first few labs that we learn in plane measurement, so I feel like we've got to use that here, and it's pretty windy in Corpus Christi, and we got to experience that here <laughs> as well. I pretty much agree with everyone. I think that the concepts we learned in class is very similar to the application we did in the field here. So, Thank you. So, can one of you standing next to the picture point to the center point uh, for the track that you guys had to survey? All right, and tell me what happened next. What did you guys do after that? We, once we found the center point, we decided to uh, radially set out and locate our midpoints and our corners of our boundary. So you had to do some pre-calculation on site because you didn't actually have the bearings of your lines until that was provided to you, is that correct? Yes, sir. We had to figure out what the distance is and what the angles would be for our midpoints and the uh, corners of the property. And um, who did those calculations or were you uh, helping each other out and double checking that the calculations were correct by having more than one person do it? I think for the most part we had more than one person do it. It was a lot of Josh and Mitchell both. But in terms of finding our uh, our bearings, it was a lot of Josh um, finding the bearings and then kind of all of us discerning how far we needed to go from those that midpoint. And w once you did that, you, you were laying out lines along bearings, right? Did you measure, you pre-calculated your distances? So you chained all these distances out, is that right? Uh, yes, that's exactly what we did. And uh, did you chain them backward and forward or just once? Uh, going regularly out, we chained them just going forward. Okay. Now, compass surveying is a little bit different because it can be affected by what's called local attraction, which could be things on the ground, things even that you're carrying and so forth. Did you take any precautions to uh, make sure you weren't having any um, misdirections because of that? Yes, uh, so none of us wore metal jewelry and we always held a compass uh, about chest level so there wasn't anything affecting it from the ground um, and because none of us were wearing any metal jewelry it didn't bother us. Okay, so um, once you got those sta uh, points staked out, what did you do next? Um, then we traversed around the boundary checking our bearings and distances for the so you, were you able to calculate some kind of an error of closure and how did you do that if you didn't have angles? Okay, so what we did was when we traversed around the boundary, we obtained our azimuths and not bearings and we got the distances and that's how we calculated linear misclosure and our relative precision. 
And then how did you do your, your topo? Did you set out a grid? Yes, we set out a 25 foot grid with 25 foot offsets or approximately 25 foot offsets past our uh, normal like parcel and that was gone throughout the entire the, the entire grid, yeah. Uh, what was the spacing of your grid? Uh, 25 foot. And did the grid cover all the points you needed to catch or did you have to go back and fill in with some topographic detail that the grid was not catching? The grid did not catch everything. We had a lot of topography on our property, so we made sure to go back and do feature shots. Uh, I was on your site. I think you can say you had more than a little bit of topography. <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, what would you say were the m was the most challenging or interesting part of this whole project? That's thinking about the project once you signed up to do it, getting the inf last minute information on Saturday, even more last minute information on Sunday, going out in the field, then your office day, and today, of course, your presentations. I think that that was the most challenging part. We didn't know what we were supposed to prepare for before coming. We didn't know what equipment. We knew a list of general equipment we were supposed to use, but we didn't know how we were going to use it, and we didn't know if we were going to get any additional equipment that we needed to practice on or anything like that. I agree with her. The waiting part is the hardest part to not know what we were doing and what we were practicing. But I feel like once we got here, the hardest part was probably dealing with the terrain and the wind. Yeah, the, the waiting was definitely antagonizing. And before even was trying to figure out what could possibly be going on. So we had like 30 different scenarios of what we thought in practice for what we what could have happened. Uh, luckily, though, with what he said, when we had a bunch of different scenarios, we had practiced on uh, a space of land that had quite a bit of change in topography, so we were kind of prepared for this. But that was just kind of our worst-case scenario being like, well, we might be able to get something with this crazy, crazy uh, topography, so we need to practice that. Well, on the initial list that we got at the very beginning of this, it said that we were getting either daylight or total station. So showing up to this with neither of them really, uh, really threw us for a loop. So I'd say that uh, having to run everything with compass instead uh, was a, a pretty big, big deal for us. Uh, another hard part is just the travel. Um, we came from South Texas, so we drove 21 hours, and that can kind of take a toll on um, your body and then the way you are mentally prepared. Um, but thankfully, we were a really good team, and so we were able to overcome that and um, do what we needed to do. So just by nodding of heads, yes or no, um, good experience? Okay, well, thank you for spending the time with us, and good luck with the results. Thank you. Thank you.